In this video, hopefully we can make more sense of dynamic player potential. The save that you see on screen is something that I did last night. I brought up a whole load of Youth Academy players and with the cheat engine, I stuck them all on a potential of 95 to begin with. Let's get the most important thing out the way first. People said that dynamic player potential was something that happened at the end of every season. That is incorrect. It's working live as you play the career mode. Your players' potentials are changing all the time. And they do change quite dramatically. You'll see that in the crazy range that I've got. Remember, these all started with 95 potential. First three seasons, we weren't good as a team. A lot of these players were miserable and their potential potentials have really suffered because of it. But there are a few that have booked the trend and their potentials have grown above 95. First off, we've got Jordan Bell, highest overall goalkeeper, but doesn't play that much. His potential has gone all the way down to 75. Similar story with Oliver King. He's not been played enough. His potential has dropped to a very worrying 74. But then there's this guy, Joel Wright. Now he is being played because that's smart. Like the computer playing the worst goalkeeper. His potential has remained pretty stable at 87. Moving on to left backs, Joel Baker played as much as King and Bell. But because his role is rotation, he's expected to play less games. And therefore his potential hasn't suffered as much as the goalkeepers. So you're looking at 82 potential at the moment. Jamie Hughes, always in the first team, normally pretty happy. His potential is 94. Before we finish with the basics and zoom through the rest of these players, I want to point out something else. This Ethan Davies kid, he got a bad injury, I think like season two or three, and his potential dipped massively. Went down to as low as, what, 71, 72? But he's come back fit. He's happy. He's playing a a few games and it's only a few because he's got the prospect role and that potential is going up now a 78 it's recovering so here are the other potentials there'll be some that stick out like a sore thumb peter alexander potential of 78 then charlie hill with 84 lance carter 85 ethan watson 82 tyler roberts the only right back that we've got therefore he's getting loads of play time potential of 93 talked about ethan davis now, Toby Hill doesn't like me at all. Submitted a transfer request ages ago. I've just ignored him. Potential is now down to 81. Platter the same, 81 overall. And then we get to this guy. I don't know how I did it, but I seem to have hit the sweet spot with Harvey Bailey. Played a lot of games, stayed happy. His overall's massive already. His potential, oh boy, 99, the max. Then there's Isaac Edwards, who was very understandable that he was like second choice, but he's been put onto a bigger contract now and he suddenly started getting very, very unhappy. Potential right now is 88, but I'm expecting that to fall. Peter Mason is a carbon copy of Harvey Bailey. They got game time, they were really happy, their potentials grew 99 potential. Here's Peter Martin, now happy, was really angry at me, and the 74 potential tells that story. On to the strikers, Alberto Fraga Camba, potential 95, Charles Richardson, potential of 98, Charlie Green, potential of 92, Charles Harrison, potential of 96, and also Giuseppe Padelli, potential of 96. The computer knows how to rotate strikers because these guys are relatively happy. They also do come up in a lot of the conversations in the press conferences, and that probably helps. So my final thoughts on it, I don't see it as a bad thing that overall my players have gone down in potential, and here's why. For far too many years, the Youth Academy has been so easy. You'd only need to scout one or two seasons and you'd be set. But now to get seriously good players, there has to be a lot of attention to detail, a lot of man management, and I think training will make the difference. It's not going to be a thing that's just on the side anymore. I really do think the days of having like insane squad depth are over, which doesn't worry me that much. Not that many teams in real life have insane squad depth. In every position, you're going to have to have your first team player, so your key player, and then a backup that knows he's a backup, and then maybe a youth academy player that you've just brought up that has either sporadic or what's the other one? Prospect as their role. That should keep your player morale high until one of them players is close to finishing up their contract and then you've got a decision to make. Like, it's almost too realistic. Hopefully they do calm this down a little bit, but it's very promising. From what I've seen, this is a good addition to FIFA career mode. And there's a lot here to be excited about, especially the fact that it's doing it live. So hopefully that 
has given you a little bit more information on dynamic player potential. If it has, then please give this video a like. If you're not subscribed to this channel yet, please press the red box down below. I do a series called Youth Squad Legends where I take Youth Academy players and regens from League 2 all the way to the Champions League final. Chances are, if you're searching for videos like this, you'll probably like the series. This has been Cutsy, and I'll see you next time.